recording. All right, so we're gonna jump into another leak here with uh, Mono Green Tron. Uh, this is a version that I was on for um, the recent IQ I went to. Um, so the lands, Four Forest, the Ghost Quarter, Sanctum, and Urza's Factory are the lands I'm still on for the non-basics and non-tron lands. All the tron lands like normal. The Stirring, Sylvan, uh, Sphere, Stars, and Expo maps are all there still. I'm on three relics. Um, and then... Oh wait, no, not three relics. Let me remove one. There should be a World Breaker. So... Um, two relics, and then it's four O-Stones. They're on four Worm Coils now just because it's so strong against the meta. We're still on four Karns, two Ugans, one World Breaker, two Ballistas, and two Ulamogs. Um, and over in the side, I'm on two Surgicals, three Claims, four Thrag Tusks, uh, three Thought Knots, two Contortions, and an Emrakul. Um, I'm just increasing the creature count because Thrag Tusks is getting better right now because of all the aggression in the format. And then if you balance it, I still get a creature to block with, and then it's just solid against control decks as well. So this is the version that I'm on, so let's jump into a leak. Alright, two Tron pieces, one Stirrings, two Payoffs. This hand's going to be really slow, so we can't keep this. This hand's also slow. We get a Scry, two extra draws, and a map. I'm more inclined to keep this one, because we, we're going to get a couple extra draws here. Alright, we got a Worm Coil on top, we'll keep that. Looks like we're against Hardened Affinity. So we are going to run out the map and pass it over. Steel Wolves here is pretty solid for them. Alright, we got a Sylvan Scrying here and the map. So we can go form Tron on turn four. So uh, Tron on turn four. Do we want to have the green or do we want to have the extra Tron piece? The extra Tron piece with a sphere is going to be the same. So yeah, we'll play this and we'll pass it over to them. Holding jar is fine. Not that much that we can do to it anyway, but hanger backs pretty good for them. If they get a ravager here, we're gonna be in trouble. Right, let's go get a mine. Good. We're gonna play mine, star, crack it for a green, and we'll Sylvan Scrying for a tower. And we'll pass it over to them. So next turn we're gonna plan on dropping the tower, um, star, and disturbing, see what we can find with that. And then if we find nothing, uh, play out the worm coil. Um, we really need them not to have a Ravager. Ballista's fine. Beat us up here. Alright. So tower. Let's run off the star. Let's go green. 
and stirrings. All right, World Breaker is pretty solid, but we can't play it this turn. Uh, Karn is also solid. I think we're going to go for the World Breaker because I, um, hmm. If we go for Karn, we can exile the Steel Overseer this turn. And then next turn, go for the Ulamog and kill it. Um, exiling the Hanger Break should, uh, alternatively, will stop them from comboing off to kill us next turn. So, yeah, no, we'd want to take out the Hanger Back. So let's grab, let, let's, yeah, let's go ahead and grab Karn. And we're going to get rid of Hanger Back. And we'll pass it over. Hard Scales. Expecting them to just kill Karn here, obviously. And then on our turn, we're gonna go Ulamog. And we're going to exile their their ballista and their ink moth is what I want to hit. There is like no, we're gonna hit Steel Overseer and Walking Ballista, and then next turn we're just gonna Ghost Quarter the Ink Moth. So let's go with that line. They can shoot us a bunch here. That's fine. They're down to just one, and just the Ink Moth is the only threat. Sure. Alright, we're gonna Ghost Quarter here. Worm coil. Put out the map. Swing on them. Do they get any interesting cards? Nope. I'll put a standard. Conceding, um, we want to bring in our nature's claims, contortions, and I like bringing in Emrakul here as well. Uh, relics are irrelevant. Ugans aren't going to be doing much. I'm fine with trimming one Ulamog for this, and uh, I'm going to trim one Worm Coil. This hand's a little awkward. We have the potential Tron farming, but it'd be on turn four, and we have nothing to do with it. So I think it's hard for us to keep that. This hand's not doing anything, so we gotta ship that. We'll keep this. Uh, I'm fine with the Ballista. If they play out a master, we can take it out. And we'll run out the sphere here. Okay. Alright, 
Let's see how lucky we are in life. We're so lucky. We're so good at this game. <laughs> uh. So next turn I'm just planning on playing Karn, exiling the Arcbound. And then the following turn playing Sanctum, uh, Blista on four. Um, go fetch up Ulamog, then play Tower and Ulamog them. So let's see how good our plan is. I know. I'd be mad at me too. If I was going against me and I mulled like that and I got this kind of hand, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Alright, Karin's dead. There we go, Sanctum. And Ballista on four. Trigger that. We're going to grab an Ulamog. And pass it over. They got Nature's Claim. Okay. Um, we can make them waste the Welding Jar here. Unless they just want a bunch of water ones. Okay, they want a bunch of water ones. Ballista on two. Get rid of your ballista and a flyer. They got another hanger back. That's fine. I think I had this for three in the sky. Let's run out of star and draw a card. Alright, nothing of importance. Let's see, do we win this race? We have 47 cards. Huh. A little awkward. Alright, well, we're gonna play a forest here. It was turn four walking Melissa, turn five little log to be fair, right? I think we actually need to hit a spell here because they can swing with the three thopters. Put us to five. And then they can add a uh, counter on hanger back. So we really need to hit something here. O stone is something.
Alright, we'll put the O-stone. We want to blow this up. If we blow it up now, they can hit us for two in the air on their turn. If we wait till their turn, they can they will have three, but that's fine because the three is irrelevant because we're just gonna be exiling their deck anyway. So we'll just wait. Ravager. Sure. Blow up the board. They can do whatever they want. It's irrelevant. And then we'll swing and exile the rest of their deck. To, oh, starting off strong. Unlike Vanifar. <laughs> I want that deck to be so good. I feel like I'm going to move away from the... Um, I feel like I'm going to move away from the combo version and try more of the, um, the version without red, just for a value deck. But I don't know. Maybe the, uh, I mean, there's been a lot of people playtesting it, and the one guy that's um, actually brought up to a pretty high level of fame says that it's a solidly tier 2 deck, and he doesn't think it's going anywhere else. I haven't seen anyone else, like, break the deck in a meaningful way or do any with it that was just above and beyond. Alright, this hand's too slow. There's not much going on. We got redundant with the sweepers. We can't form Tron, so we're gonna ship it. This hand's got natural Tron, so we're keeping it. Map. I'm gonna bottom that map, because I'm gonna go. Star. Depending on what they got going on, I may save the Sylvan Scrying, or I may just go fetch off a Ursus Factory. If they got the ability to destroy our lands, obviously I'm gonna hold onto it. Are they burn? Yeah, it's not. The, it's not out of the to the pod level that I want it to be. All right. Well, we got a worm coil against a burn deck, so that's pretty great. Let's go green here. I'm gonna play out the power plant, and I'm gonna go fetch up the um, the factory. And we're gonna pass it over to them. Next turn, we'll drop Worm Coil and stay on that warm life. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to keep trying it out, though. I'm going to keep playtesting. I feel like it's just going to become my pet deck that I'm going to just keep playing around with till I get it to the right spot. And we draw the same tone. That's cool. Alright, let's see if our opponent has any way to keep up with the swarm coil. Right, and if that's the, the where it needs to be, where it's just a solid value deck over a combo deck, I feel like that's the reason I should go for the um, the the black version, so I can get like quality removal spells, ability to recur things multiple times, and the rest of the plan is still there and it's still really strong. So being able to just get a lot of ETB triggers. Alright, well, let's swing on our opponent. They got a skull crack.
Yep, they're going for the double burn spell. Double burn spell. It's pretty good for us. We're gonna run out of factory here. I don't see a value playing the O stone. I'd rather just make a 2 2 creature. So I'm just gonna pass it over. They're gonna kill our life linker, I'm sure. Yep. Yeah, that's why um, he used to play paths in the deck. source that's not good for us <laughs> um we could play the world i mean we could play it out by giving up our factory um and that way we'd have a faster clock or we wait till next turn to do it that way we have the sanctum hmm we go world breaker right now. We can take out the blood crypt, shutting them off of three more bumps in their deck. Having the sanctum to go get another world breaker. I mean, uh, another worm coil though would be really good for us. I don't think we're like we're not in a rush, but I guess I'd rather close out this game faster than not. So yeah, let's go for the ghost quarter here on our own factory. Or I guess we could keep the factory and uh, generate the mana now and give up the mine and then play another mine. Hmm. Yeah, I guess I like that more because I don't really I don't want to give up our factory if I don't have to. Yeah, they have no cards, so we could we could have waited, but I'd rather just close out the game faster, um, and just that way we don't even give them the chance to come back, because they'd have to go like triple burn spell here, and we can go 7-7, seven, seven, so we'll be one turn faster. playing the O-Stone here, because in case they kill our assembly worker, I want to be able to make another one. It's right. game there. Alright, I want to bring in all the Thrag Tusk, all the Thought Knots, and then the Contortions. I don't need the Relics, I don't need the O-Stones, I don't need the Ulamogs. Ugans are poor. Carns are poor. I think I took out too much. <laughs> um, we'll bring back in the Carns and the Umbrical. All right, we don't have the ability to form Tron easily, but we have two pieces. And then we have the green source and we got the star. So I'm gonna I'm I am gonna keep this because 
uh, it does fit into my general rule that if I have Tron pieces and the ability to dig a little bit deeper and have payoffs, I'm going to keep that. So. Bumping us. We'll go mine the star and pass it over. I didn't bring in the claims. I don't know. I've been... So, like, I've been unimpressed with any time I brought them in. And I don't think this deck has Eidolons for us to take out either. Maybe I'm wrong. Oh, they do have Eidolons. I'm bad. Alright, I'm going to play the star here. and We're going to take the damage because if we do draw the other Tron piece, I want to be able to drop the Thrag Tusk. That's unfortunate. If I wanted luck with stirrings, I'm gonna have to take a bunch of damage. Oh, what are they? Exile. Destructive Rovery and a Skull Crack. Mm hmm. Okay, so we go Sylvan Scrying here. Play the other land to form Tron. And then next turn go for the Thrag Tusk and hopefully that's enough. just dead. So we got like three put us to eight. Swing put us to six and two more burn spells. Mm -hmm. Burn spells were dead. Light up the stage. Alright, skewer. And. Skull crack. Boom. We did. I think it was very close to just I think if we were on the play that hand would have won. Well this hand's not doing anything, so we're gonna ship that away. And this hand doesn't do anything either, so we're gonna ship that away. This hand kinda gets close to doing something, so we're gonna keep it. And it's got a second lane on top, so we'll keep that. Us a free. Yeah, we're going back up. <laughs> oh, and we got the uh, the power plant. We're good at this game, folks. We are good at this game. We oh, oh and we got the tower. Okay, okay, life's easy. Um, do we want a Sylvan's crying as a result of that? 
I don't think we do. I think we just want to try to dig into a spell as fast as we can right now. Are they going to revelry us? Nope, another guy. Alright, another power plant and another mine. Okay. We could really use a payoff spell. Of the preferable worm variety. so good at this game folks like uh, are you guys are you guys seeing this <laughs> oh wow never punished They're going to probably invest a lot to take out the worm coil here, I imagine. Or they're just going to rubble ray it. Yep. And then they're going to rift bolt to get, take out the other life linker. Definitely still a game. Hopefully they don't have another land, so they have to hold back with the guides this turn. Because if they just played, like, land, bolt, and then killed it, that'd be pretty rough for us. Okay, so we're going to crack this map. We're going to get a factory. Play out the factory. We're going to play another map. We're going to crack that and go get a sanctum. And we're going to pass it back to our opponent. Green, another revelry. Yep. Alright, looks like we're down to six. Tower. And a Sylvan's crying on top of our deck. So, we're just going to be planning on making a 2 2 here, so I'm just going to play the Force and Pass. People are really enjoying Buried Ruins over the factory right now, just because like here uh, we we would we would be able to recur our worm coil engine, which is really strong, obviously. All right, World Breakers on top of our deck. Go for the block. We're at four. Bump us down to one. Skewer us. And that's game, folks. Yeah, like, I mean, if we would have had Worm Coil there, I think. I mean, not Worm Coil there, but a Buried Rune there, that would have uh, allowed for us to recur the Worm Coil. And that's, like, the big reason why people are playing that over the Factory, where Factory has that longevity that uh, uh, Buried Rune doesn't have. And Buried Rune needs something else, too. Um, be able to do stuff where the factory doesn't. He just needs the lands in play. Okay, 
this hand does not have the ability to form Tron reasonably, so we're going to ship that. This hand doesn't either. This hand might get there, I guess, so we'll keep that. We get the Tron piece on top, so we can form torn, turn for Tron here. And we're going against Dredge, so we'll see if that's good enough. This there. Didn't miss there. They got a blood gas. Faithless with no dredgers. We're okay with that. We've got another blood gas in the grave and then a bug. Pretty solid for them. Alrighty. Some map here, go get a mine. So I'm like surprised. I guess they couldn't have sequenced it any different. I was thinking about why didn't they mill themselves first before getting the gas back, but it's not possible. Alright, pretty solid for them. Two amiibos, two amalgams are coming back. Taking four this turn down to 16. They don't have a conflag yet. And we're going to be taking 12 next turn at least. Nope, now it's 14. Hmm. We're going to be on at like two by the time we can get this Ugin off. So that's pretty bad. There's a good chance we're just dead because of that. They're just gonna land here, get back blood gas, and then swing. Put us to 16. Our turn, we're just gonna go land into Sylvan Scrying um, to play Oog in the following turn. But we're gonna be at a two. So we would need them like, to not hit a Creeping Chill, not have one in hand, and not have a Kid Flag either. Asking for a lot. Oh, there's the conflag. The knees are dead. We're going to star here. Crack it. Into the Sylvan. Get the tower. And unless for some reason they didn't want to cast the conflag. We're dead. Hard cast creeping chill kill. They're like, got you. Alright, we want both surgicals. And then we want the thrags. I have such a hate love hate relationship with the thought knot in here. I'm gonna bring it in, but I've been punished pretty hard for it as well. So um Karns are pretty slow here. Woodbreaker's good. 
Little mods are pretty slow. Luna's good, wipes their board. Ballista's like fine. It takes out like their blood gas and their narco amoebas. But not the greatest thing in the world. Cause... And with that, I think the thing I'm going to cut is one bot knot back to the side. And like, so in like the tournament that I got like punished really hard for playing Thought Knot against them was I would Thought Knot them and they would not have the Kun Flag and then they'd be, they'd flip over the Kun Flag and then they'd shoot my Thought Knot and then I gave them a draw so then they dredged into another Kun Flag and they just like chained out of control for like the worst sequence of events for me possible. And I just got like demolished. did tell Merriman Man that we check out the training grounds deck that uh, they played. Might have to try that out pretty soon. Oh, I can't stream on um, Wednesday, folks, just so you're aware. I, uh, I'm going to be traveling for work and for a training session. So I'm going to be um, on the road. I won't be back home until like 10 o'clock at night or something like that. So I won't be able to uh, stream, but I should be able to next Sunday, I'm hoping to. Um, so, yeah, no stream on Wednesday. Alright, this hand is going to form Tron into a worm coil. We will keep it. to six and looks like they're thinking about going down to five. My phone is blowing up. Alright, power plant map, pass it over. Am I going to make it out on Monday or Thursday? Thursday's a possibility, Monday not realistically, because I had to be up at like five on Tuesday. Um morning to get to to get ready and get to Lansing in time so yeah it'd be really hard for me to make it oh wow okay so we got a relic here and I think forming Tron into worm coil is just more important so we're gonna let that go until next turn looks like they got two lands again and they hit a loam. Okay, they dredged the back. They got a chill and an amalgam. Cast loam past turn. So debatably here, we should just uh, run out the relics and just start exiling their stuff. So it just reduces their ability to do anything. Because they have seven cards in hand, but three of them are lands. And if we can get rid of their ability to dredge anything, it should prevent them to do anything really relevant. So 
Um, as much as I want to run out that worm coral, I'm going to hold off one turn and just run out these relics. Because now that we got Tron online, it'll be a lot easier for us to do anything we want, really. Okay, they got rid of everything but the amalgam, so we're actually pretty good with that. Because if they trigger anything to get back their amalgam, we can just pop the relic. Alright, they just hit two lands there. Garby, did you put together your list for the tournament? Because uh, we're going to want to get that squared away here pretty soon. Alright, they hit a Narco Amoeba, and that is good enough for us to pop the Relic against. And we got a Surgical. We're so good at this. They're gonna cast an Archimedo. I think we're in a pretty happy place in life when Dredge is doing that. I'm gonna like so here I have the option of either getting a a forest, and that way we can cast the Sylvan Scrying, or getting a tower, um, and then just running out Worm Coil. Um, we lose the ability to activate our relic if we go with the worm coil play um, But I think right now with where we're at we're okay with it All right, They're probably gonna grudge our worm coil or go for the relic here they might go for the relic just so they don't have to worry about us getting anything exiled okay We also need to get our uh, ride situations figured out because I think there's like um, f two to three cars. Okay, yeah. Put, see what you can put together, um, and if there's anything that you need from me, just let me know. I think we're planning on just doing a one day, -er, so that's going to be a pretty long day for all of us. All right, they're flashing it back. loan and then pass it to us we'll hold the surgical here and see if we want to actually use it um, let's see we can I think start off with this chromatic we'll crack it for the green we're gonna go Sylvan scrying and we're gonna go get a green source here play that out and then we're going to drop another worm coil. And we'll swing in. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that it was a, just a day trip because, um, you know, if someone does anywhere near decent. Okay, they got a stink weed on. Uh, anywhere near decent, we're probably not going to be back for quite some time.
Like, we're, we're, I mean, I, I heard we have to leave at, like, what? Six in the morning? And we probably won't be back till, like, after midnight. So it'll just be a long day. Lugan should pretty much win the game for us at this point, then, if they don't have anything else going on. I would imagine they concede, yeah. Yeah, I think those can be fun. We should make sure once we get our group squared away um, to make ev everybody pre register if we can. One deck that I've been very interested in seeing if it's good enough again would be uh, Bantle Drowsy, actually. Oh, this hand's so close. We're going to keep it, but I, I, there's a good chance we would just lose here, too. Because if we don't hit the, uh, if we don't hit a, like a spear or a green source here, we're probably just dead. <laughs> Yeah, it won't cost that much, and the way I see it is that because we have multiple cards going, um, if some people do scrub out and need to head home early, we can just figure the car situations out um, from that, and then people can leave. So that way people aren't forced to stick around, which will be okay. Um, Stinkweed and alrighty. Yeah, he did. Yeah, that's a deck that, um, I don't know, I don't think I'd be too far away from being able to put that together. And I think it's in a good spot. Eldrazi seems strong right now, and it's got access to the best sideboard cards. Alright, we got the green. So we're going to hold off one more turn just in case we top deck the Tron piece. Oh man, this is sweet. All right, so we got a relic here, so I'm just gonna pop the relic. This is pretty strong for us to pop it right now. Or, yeah, I don't want to wait for them to dredge because then they'll have a dredger in hand. So we're just gonna we're just gonna run this out and pop it right now. And we got another one. So I'm not gonna play it because I don't want to expose it to an ancient grudge, but we're just gonna play a force and pass. Shriekhorn. Playing tons of those. Alright, we're gonna Sylvan Scrying here. Get the tower. Lay it out, and let's play a Thought Knot. They got a claim, a grudge, a cathartic. Um, we'll just make sure to play around the claim and the grudge. Let's take their cathartic from them. And we'll pass it. Do we care if they hit a map? Yeah. Mm, I guess we don't care. We're just going to play that out because we, as long as we can keep our relic around, that's fine. 
If they want to hit it and get a spell in their graveyard and just give us four life, we're okay with that. Alright, they got a blood gas and a life in the loam. And a creeping chill on us. Blood gas and a stinkweed. Of blood gas. Are we either stirrings here or thrag tusk? I think stirrings here is just fine because if we need to, we can just map for another green source for the thrag tusk. And there's some spells we would just absolutely love to hit with this. And we hit none of them. Absolutely none of them. <laughs> Um, okay. We can grab the sphere here and just draw an extra card and then play out the Thrag Tusk, saving our map to go get a, like a Sanctum of Ugin or a Factory. Um, which seems fine. Alright. So, we will play... So if we play Thrag Tusk right now, which we want to, we gain the life, they still have the Nature's Claim, the Ancient Grudge, and the Gemstone Mine in hand if we run out the Relic. They cast it, we pop it in response. And then they're just left with, they're left to no dredgers and they're just a single shriek horn trigger. That seems fine. It's interesting, they're just un letting us untap. Faithless, that's good, that's fine. And now they're gonna nature's claim. And we'll crack this. We get a thought knot, which is pretty good. Ooh, and they hit a stink weed. Pretty solid for them. Only into a blood gas, though. Pretty solid for us. Yeah, I don't know. Um, Zemus, we, I've been playing a lot of pod, and we just went 1-4 in a league with it. Um, I still want to make the deck work, but I'm getting kind of burnt out on playing it because we just seem to keep not just having good plays and the deck just doesn't seem in the right spot yet. Alright, let's swing in on them.
I might just need a break from the deck and then go back to it. That's probably just fine. So, all right, let's crack this map. Go get ourselves another tower. Play the tower. I don't think it doesn't matter how we slice it. All right, we're gonna go with thought knot. Yeah, I usually do well with Tron. Uh, regionals is the ninth. It gives me like another two solid weeks of testing. Yeah, if you want to send me the Eldrazi, uh, the Bant Eldrazi list, I don't mind um, playing that next. Um, it's either that or play another league with uh, Vanifar here. Just swinging here. They kill our thought knot and draw some cards, but they have to. They can't let uh, they, one of the Thragtos has to get blocked, so they're gonna go to one. So here, I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna Sylvan Scrying. Go get a factory, play the factory, play out on O-Stone. And just pass it. So I don't want to pop those on here. I'm just going to be activating the factory. You don't want me to play Tron at regionals? Yeah, I don't really want to play Tron at regionals. I don't. I don't. I'm not enjoying the deck right now. I don't like where it's really at in the format. I think it's a fine deck. You get those Tron hands, so you just get to win the match, um, which is you know cool and all. But like, I'd like to find that deck that I I really enjoy playing again in modern and. Um, I don't know, I haven't, haven't quite gotten to that deck that I'm like, man, I'm, I'm excited to play this deck right now. Uh, Tron was the deck for a long time, and then before that, E-Tron was the deck, but I don't know. Um, I definitely wanted Vanifar to be that deck, but it's it's not there. Not yet, at least. Needs much more testing. All right, so we'll take the play here. Um, this hand can grab two pieces, and if we had one more piece, uh, one Tron piece in hand, we'd probably keep it, but with the way it's shut, uh, set up, I, I'm not comfortable keeping this hand, so we're gonna shift that away. This hand's not doing much either, uh, so we're gonna shift that. We got no lands here, so we're gonna shift that. And we got two pieces here, so we'll keep that. We're gonna send the Ugin to the bottom of the deck because we already got two payoffs. And let's see if we can find ourselves another Tron piece or a map. Yeah, 
and we found another Tron piece. Folks, I don't want to alarm you and have you guys ever questioned the fact that I just draw Tron pieces like no problem. <laughs> uh, we're so good at this game. Like, we are so good. What are they on? Faithless? Another dredge player? Alright, they're the Vengevine deck. Okay. Okay. I don't think the Vengevine deck can keep up with Worm Coils. This is why I want to play Tron. Yeah, I mean, this is exactly why anyone plays Tron. You you can just form Tron, and you have seven mana, and you get to drop these ridiculous threats, and you win the game. No one plays Tron because they enjoy the deck. Like, not on a realistic level. They play Tron because you get to do absurd things and then win the game. And then you go take a break while everyone else is still playing their game. I'm just gonna run out another worm coil here. And then we're just gonna go to the aggression. <laughs> we got there, folks. Okay. Uh, so we want the Thrag Tusk. For sure. And we want the Surgicals. I don't know if we really want the Thought Knots here. Nature's Claim doesn't seem bad, but it only hits the Hollow Ones. And I always really hate that. I don't really want the Ballistas, and I don't want the Ulamogs. Karn seems fine-ish. Yeah, I think Karns are the other cards we're going to have to cut here. Yeah, I think we're going to run it like this. I played Yu-Gi-Oh! for a long time, man. I played Yu-Gi-Oh! from the time that I pretty much could play Yu-Gi-Oh! Oh, this hand's, um... This hand's... Oh, it's got two Tron pieces. We got a Stirrings for the other Tron piece, so we're going to keep it. Um, I played Yu-Gi-Oh! for a long time, man. I, I loved Yu-Gi-Oh! Until, like, once it shifted from, like, a deck that you were at, a game where you were actually going back and forth and taking out your opponent, and then it became a turn zero uh, format, like, that was just miserable. And I think it still is a turn zero format from everything I've heard about and talked to people about. It's just absurd. Like, you either... Your opponents are going to try to kill you before the game even starts. That's nuts. Alright, so we're just playing the Tron pieces here. See if we can walk into a uh, tower before we pop this Ancient Stirrings. Because if we do, we'd love to be able to... We'd prefer to find a different threat rather than having to use it to find the tower, or if we draw one of the things. So we're holding off as much as we can. All right, they're going to Bushwhacker here, and this is going to be a pretty painful turn. All righty. So we're here. This is about as far as we can go with it. So see if we can take this, find a something relevant. Not Okay, that's a... That's an O stone, which isn't bad. We're gonna form Tron. But they have 10 power on board. So we're gonna go to two for sure. Let's see if we're dead. Bushwhacker kick. Nope, cathartic. Nope, that will do it though. So, GG opponent. Ooh, this is like, this is quite the brew. They got Death Shadow in here too. Alrighty, alrighty. Kind of want to bring in the, uh, the contortions now. I don't know what we would cut for them though. 
guess we can cut the cut the carns and bring in the contortions and try to hold them off as much as possible. Well, this hand's worthless. Got no lands. Hmm. This hand's close. It's got one Tron piece. Hmm. If they have any kind of hand like similar to what they had before, though, we're just dead. Hmm. <laughs> so we've got two Tron pieces. And if we're really lucky, we're going to be playing that Thrag Tusk on turn four. And then a factory. I'm going to keep it, but I don't think this hand's very good. And there's a good chance it's just not going to get there. Relic on top, though, makes us a lot happier. I want to talk about a game that I played for a little bit. I don't know if anyone else here played it. Did you guys play Duel Masters ever? When I dropped out of Yu-Gi-Oh, I switched over to Duel Masters, and that was that was a pretty fun game, I gotta say. Take some damage here. Mm -mm -mm. We are just waiting. Got a shadow and a bushwhacker kicked. Whew. All right, we're not on the graveyard plan right now. We're just on the the bushwhacker shadow zoo. <sighs> hmm. We're, so I feel like our actual best option here is because they haven't been doing much of the graveyard plan is to pop this and see if we can hit a contortion to try to reduce the amount of damage we're taking here we didn't hit it that's fine worm coil okay going for that Sylvan Scrying. Let's see if we can survive a turn. If we can survive a turn, we can drop the Thrag Tusk and Worm Coil and stabilize. Ourselves a tower. Oh, 
I think our best plan here is to just run out Thrag Test because we need that life gain immediately and then run out O Stone and then next turn play Worm Coil and we can hold up O Stone. Because if we ran out Worm Coil, there's a chance that they could uh, deal with Worm Coil in some way, and then we would be um, in a terrible situation. There's a chance they could instant speed do something with the Death Shadow, but that's fine. I don't want to take the extra damage if that's the case. And if they want to eat our Thrag Touch, that's fine. Yes. Then we can only just play the worm coil. I don't want to swing for three. Here, it's it's. There's a good chance they just deal with the worm coil, and then we lose if we do that. Which I don't want to risk it, so I'd rather just wait here. The two blockers, and then next turn we can hold up a O stone with the ability to swing with worm coil, and that feels much better to me. And thanks for the Bantel Drazi list, Blake. I have it, so I'm gonna go ahead and download it and. Let's uh let's play that next. Ancient Grudge it. Okay. So in response here, we're going to crack a sphere and then we're going to pop the O stone right now. Wipe the board. We get to keep our creatures. That will fizzle and then they could hit the other one if they want to with on their turn. And let's try to take over this game with uh, these wormies and that factory. So, like, this is another instance where I think the buried ruin would have been better. Like, we could have just been able to bring back the worm coil and just uh, drop it on the board. Alright, 
this match. All right, three and one going into the last match of this league here. Once we get done with this league, we're gonna swap over to Bant El Drazi. Thank you much. All right, this hand we can f only fetch a one piece of Tron, so we're gonna ship this. We got a couple more draws with this one, with the the stars and the sphere here and the map, so I'm fine with keeping this one because we also have t two lands. Alright, we got the other one on top of the deck, so we'll have turn three Karn. It's a good day. Is this another graveyard based deck? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Alright, it looks like we're going against Dredge. I got double gas there. I mean, it could be one of the other blood gas style decks. There's just a ton of them. And we're just playing against all of them today. Alright, the Hidden Amalgam. Creeping chill. Yep, uh, we are definitely playing against one of the same style decks. All right, so let's see if they concede when we exile their uh, stomping ground. Surgicals, we want Thrags, and we want it to Thoughts. We take out the Ballistas, take out the Ulamogs. I believe we took out the Cards, and we keep the World Breaker. What are your guys' thoughts on Bantel Drowsy in the meadow right now? I think it's in a good spot. Hand. We got no lands. Ugh, I don't think we can keep this either. So this hand's pretty much pointless. Alright, we got a Tron piece. We're gonna ship that to the bottom. See what we can do with this hand here. Sphere. Why Tron right now? We were on Vandafar. We played a league of it, and uh, I got crushed. Uh, we went one and four. Um, we'll 
I'll probably swap back after this and then go Bantel Drowsy, I think. I think we'll have enough time for all that. I do want to try out that Bantel Drowsy list. No, I'm not playing at the um, the standard one. I don't. I don't have enough experience with standard right now to try to play a deck. I don't think it's selling out for cheap wins. I mean, it's. Uh, I don't like. I've been playing a lot of the Vanifar this last two weeks, uh, trying to make the deck work, and I can't quite make it work. Tron is the deck that I was on beforehand. And it's, um, I mean, like, I could, I could make the argument that every deck in Modern is just trying to get a cheap win, right? Like, you're either just trying to either, uh, power out uh, creatures like this deck is doing right now and that we're going against and getting the threats that they're able to and just have that recurability and try to, instead of trying to cast it, or look at Phoenix where they're just trying to bin cards in the graveyard and get it win that way. Storm's just trying to storm off. Like, every deck is trying to get a cheap win in Modern. It's just how they're approaching it, and certain wins um, feel better than other ones. But at the end of the day, I think pretty much all modern decks are just trying to get a snaked in win. There's a few fair decks that in modern that actually try to keep things uh, pretty relevant in as far as like getting good games back and forth, but I think they're few and far in between. Blue White's probably the only like really honest deck that uh, that we are going against. That there's not, I don't know. There's not. Uh, yeah, that, that's probably the only one. So I'd agree with you there, Gorb. I guess the Jun style decks are also very fair, and they do what they're doing very efficiently. Either doing it through the um, hand disruption, and then just an efficient threat. Which is probably closer to how you know Richard Garfield wanted this game to be played. I think we're just dead here. By the way, uh, they're about to hit, bring us down to a really low life total, like seven, and we don't have Tron form to pop off this O Stone, or get this Ugin, or get this Thrag Dusk in play. So I think we're gonna go to the next match. I mean, the next game here in a bit. But I don't know, that's just my opinion. I'm, I very well could be wrong on that aspect, and maybe Tron is the only cheap deck out there that's playing uh, Karn things, because that's where the problem is, right? Like, no one has an issue with the rest of the stuff that Tron does. It's the it's the Karn aspect of it, the Exiles lands, no one ever enjoys. Alright, let's run it back. Try to hit some lands here. Alright, so we're not hitting lands, but we do have a relic, which makes me want to keep this hand. It's kind of suspect though, but I'm gonna try it. We're not really Formitron at an efficient level, which is really bad, but we're gonna be able to hold them off a good bit.
Okay. Bardic. No dredgers. Looks like we can hold off popping relic for another turn, which is good for us. I'm gonna pop the sphere here because nice we get a land uh, we can play another sphere and then I want to be able to hold up the mana for a relic still blood gas we activate it they just crack the blood stain and get it back so we would just be getting the amalgam A relic just for an amalgam. That's where we're at right now. I think that's fine. So we can just get to Tron. We can get this Ugin out. Sylvan's crying. Go get the missing Tron piece. Play it out. And we're going to play that out and the O-Stone. Alright. If we can get back to our turn with the Tron pieces online, we're going to be in a really good spot. We can drag to us and just take over this game for us. Dark blasting their own blood gas to get a dredge effect to go on. You got an opponent. I am auto passing. The bigger turn they can have. Right now, the better it is for us. As far as just creatures. <laughs> Triple creeping shells, on the other hand, that's pretty rough. our O stone thinking that they're safe. Hmm. 
Okay. Pop for green. No, we're gonna hold off. So if I go grab a green right now, I'm not gonna be able to drop this Ugin. It's still a battle here because if they get a pin flag, they can hit us for like 10. Oh, they're gonna hard cast creep and chill. They're definitely setting up for the pin flag kill. good we can get one thrag off we can't go thrag and thrag and warm coil here unfortunately so we can only get up to 10 mana let's crack this for a green thought not's pretty good though Okay, so we can run out Thrag. Uh, let's, yeah, run out Thrag, gain the life, run out Thought, see if they have a spell we want to take. We can um, shoot their ghast as well. Life. They got multiple life of the loams. Dark Blast shouldn't be that relevant, so we're just going to take the Stinkweed here. They're going to be able to recur back that Blood Blast no matter what, but we're going to shoot it just because it doesn't have um, haste. And then we're going to pass it here. Let the one alone back lands. 
I do have an ancient grudge in the graveyard now, so worm coil is less powerful. Do they want to hit the O stone? I don't think so. Yeah, they're just going to low. That way they can be at seven cards. They bring back everything, we're just gonna exile everything, so I don't think they will. Another land. So we can just shoot them. We want to shoot the Narcomia because we don't want to go down to, um, we don't want to go down to ten here because then we're dead. So I'm gonna shoot that. Run out the worm coil. And let's go for the attack. If they hit a chill here, we're dead. So one thing we can't have them hit. Okay, they didn't hit a chill. They can cast loan, get three lands back, go up to ten cards, can flag for ten only. So unless I'm missing something, that's that's the end of the line for them. They can't go for any kind of swing with blood gas either because of worm coil. If they want an ancient grudge worm coil, um, maybe that was an option, but they have only one blood gas, and we've also got an O stone. We do have to be careful of them killing Thawnox, that would give them another um, draw. Alright, there goes the loan. I thought they only had three. Did they only play three? I thought they play four. I think that was the other game, because I only see... Oh, no, you're right. They did, they did cast one. You're absolutely right. So, yes, uh, chill's no longer an option. I was only looking at the exile. I see one in the grave here. So, I don't think they can win. something crazy happens I, I don't foresee how they can how they get us here they could um, so they could ancient grudge the worm coil they're gonna go for a faith let's hook up don't know what they could be shooting for See another grudge, some more loans and a dark glass, and then they hit an amalgam and a blood gas.
so I imagine they're going to go for the... Oh, they may try to go Ancient Grudge on our Worm Coil on our turn, giving us two tokens so we can't swing with it, and then we can only swing for nine, but then we can Ugin Ugin. Um, shoot them, then shoot them again. Because they don't know that we have another one in hand. So, we'll go for the swing here. the worm coil. We get some tokens. Hit them for nine. We're gonna shoot them for three. And shoot them for another three. Eight mana lightning bolts. That's how we do it. <laughs> uh, okay. Let me return these couple. Ooh, actually, I don't need to return anything. We're good. All right. I am renting out Bant Eldrazi. We'll run that with the leak, and then I'll see how tired I am and see if we want to run another deck after that. Just trying to find the cards for us right now. Yeah, this one is nuts. I keep hearing it bang up against the building. I'm not sure if you guys can hear that from the mic as well. Oops. we want. Souls and deck. Oops, let's work on the other recording. <laughs> 